In order to understand the title of this video, please watch to the end. Otherwise, you might think that I am advising you not to pray. Please pray. It is important to pray because prayer is a way to communicate with God. It is vital for any healthy relationship to be able to communicate in order for it to work. In this video, however, I'm going to share with you four things that you should stop asking for in prayer. First, stop praying for God to be with you all of the time. We've all felt at some point that God is distant or even not with us at all. But nothing could be farther from the truth. God promises in His Word over and over again that He is always with us. Not only that, He has proven time and time both in the Bible and even in our lives today that He is there. Matthew 28 verse 20, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Jesus said, I am with you always. Now, always means always. In all of your ways, he will be with you. There is no need to ask him over and over again to be with you because he is already with you. As a Christian, he said that he will never leave you nor forsake you. Hebrews 13 verse 5. Keep your life free from love of money and be content with what you have. For he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Stop praying for God to be with you all of the time. Now, a better prayer would be, God, please remind me that you are always with me because sometimes I get, I get so caught up in love and my own doing that I forget that you are with me. I pray that you would make me more aware of your presence in my life. I believe a prayer like that will honor God every time. And just to ask Him over and over to be with you is pointless and you are wasting time because He is already with you. Second, do not pray for God to curse others. In your anger, your pain or hate, we can want God to judge and avenge us. But that does not give us a legal right to curse or pray for judgment on a person or a group of people. This includes praying for someone to die. A good example is when Jesus rebuked the disciples in this next verse, Luke 9 verse 54 to 55. And when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them just as Elijah did? But he turned and rebuked him and said, you do not know what manner of spirit you are of. If we pray for God to destroy or curse people, we go against everything that Jesus taught in Luke 6 verse 28 where he said the following, Bless those who curse you and pray for those who abuse you. Instead of praying for curses to fall on others or God's judgment, we should be mature in Christ and follow this next scripture. Ephesians 4 verse 29. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up as fits the occasion and it may give grace to those who hear. Do not pray for judgment or curse others. According to the Bible, we are accountable for the words we use. The goal is to show grace to others. Yes, that means showing grace to others in our prayers also. Prayer should be a place where we reflect God's values and will. And His will is that all people would know Him and that no one should suffer. Instead of asking God to curse someone, pray that God will change that person's heart and their way of thinking and believing. Third, stop asking God for more of His Spirit. 
Christians, we pray for hours and hours. God, I want more of you. I want more of your spirit in my life. Now, just the question, when you become one with God, one in spirit with him, do you just receive a portion of his spirit or do you receive all of his spirit? 1 Corinthians 6 verse 17, then the one who is united and joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Think about it. Do you only have a portion of his spirit inside of you or the entire spirit of God? In 1 Corinthians 6 verse 19, Paul reminds us by saying, Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. He does not say that your body is a temple for only 65% of the Holy Spirit. And if you pray enough and pray for more of His Spirit, only then can you receive His entire Spirit. The idea of us only having a portion of God's Spirit is ridiculous. And we should not think that God, who is Spirit Himself, can divide Himself into pieces. If you are a child of God, you have His Spirit, all of His Spirit. Do not ask for more of His Spirit, but ask for your eyes to be opened so that you can see and feel more of Him. You already have His Spirit. Now you have to learn how to feel and experience the God who lives in you, a God who is Spirit. And fourth, do not pray for forgiveness if you are already forgiven. Now, this one is important. I truly believe that God can and will forgive you if you ask Him. He is a good Father, but some people, unfortunately, cannot let go of the past. You did something bad 15 years ago and still every day you ask God to forgive you for your wrongdoing. Doesn't Hebrews 8 verse 12 say the following, For I will be merciful to their iniquities and I will remember their sins no more. Please help me. That passage said that he will remember my sins no more. But why do people still ask God to forgive them if they have already asked God for forgiveness in the past? The problem is that most people still feel guilty. And because they feel guilty, they think that God is still angry with them for the things they did years ago. Please hear this today. If God forgave you, He forgave you. You need to stop asking for forgiveness again and again. Let go of the past because God has. Stop asking for forgiveness for something that has already been forgiven. You are just placing yourself under condemnation. Those were the four things I think every believer should not pray for. If there is anything that you would like to add or share with our community, please leave a comment below. To end this video, let me just give you a last verse to encourage you. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 16 to 18 Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Jesus Christ for you. May you pray without ceasing and may you experience God as a God who deeply cares for you. Remember to give thanks to God in all circumstances. Amen. Remember to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.